Yeah, that's right. You've already seen us once this week. We did the, the preview for NFL Week 2 because we know some NFL. And by the way, who the hell's we? I got another guy on here. Just hold on a second. I'll tell you all about him. What's up, man? I'm Degenerate75. I'm a high-limit DFS player who is uh, kind of known in the golf community, trying to break into this football community and help some of you slappies out so you quit giving away uh, so much money because these DFS streets, they'd be really fucking rough, brother. So what you want to know is we're going to break down the main slate for tomorrow for NFL, give you our final thoughts, and uh, you know try to help you. We do, we're do. we going to do this every Saturday, so be looking out for it. Every Tuesday, we put out our preview, and Monday and Thursday for the primetime games, we put out a video for those too. You're like, hey, isn't Sunday night a primetime game? Yeah, Bob, it is, but we got a fucking life, and we, gotta, we can't do every game, all right? Chill out. So with that said, let me introduce my homie, and uh, we're going to get going, breaking down this slate, because we don't want to be here all, all gold darn day. My dude, John Gold JD, is on here, uh, feeling saucy after week one, after he already took down a Rainmakers GPP, this legend over here. John, how you doing today? What is up? Uh, <laughs> that was quite the intro. Um, again, yeah, how are you doing? I mean, I'm all right. I, I, look, it's uh, it's 9 o'clock in the morning, 9 a.m. here in the Lowards time zone. And if, if I got this much energy, you know I'm pumped. We got PGA showdown today. We've got college football all day. We got my Sooners that are going to spank the Cornhuskers. And we got an NFL slate tomorrow that I'm feeling pretty saucy about. I, I feel like it's one of those slates that it's not obvious where to go. And I feel like when that's the case, it's uh, it's advantage to sharper players. And advantage to GPP bros. I think this is the the weekend to be playing uh, tournaments. I know I said that last weekend because just the variability in week one. But again, this week without some of like the true uh, upper echelon players on the, the slate, there's an opportunity to get different without sacrificing a ton of value. So um, that's always what you're looking for as a tournament player. And you know me and you are some GPP bros. We love some GPPs. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> oh, quick, Sunday Night Football. I know you said uh, why, we, why we don't do a show for Sunday Night Football. If you aren't burnt out after watching football from one o'clock until whatever, seven o'clock or seven thirty when the four o'clock games and you still want another show before the eight o'clock or eight thirty Sunday night football game, you have a level of degeneracy that even I have not achieved. And if uh, if you're really down for that, shoot, shoot me a DM and we can just jump on, uh, do a one on one because I imagine there's only one of you. So I got to tell you, there'll be no slandering hardos on this channel, okay? We want all the sweaty tryhards in the world, okay? Hey, bud. Oh, I'm as tryhard as it comes. You don't listen to John Gold, JD. If you love Sunday Night Showdown after a full day of sweating your other your week-long lineups, you get right on in there. There's nothing wrong with you, brother. Okay, my name's The Degenerate 75. <laughs> We're in a brotherhood. Okay, so uh, let's see. Let's just uh, let's jump into the slate. Um and uh, get going. I, I, you know, like I, I feel like these videos, people, people want their information. They want to move the fuck on. There's a lot of content out there, so we're not going to keep you here for two hours rambling on, telling stories about McDonald's and shit. Okay, uh, what, you, do you want to look at the overall positions, or you want to break it down by game? Yeah, let's go game by game. I guess first, some high level thoughts on the slate and how I want to do a little bit different than last week. I think last week, because of the variability and of week one, I really wasn't sure how some offenses would play or what people's roles in those offenses would be. Not that we have a ton more information after week one, but we do at least have a whole you know 60 minutes of play time. Um, so I think this week, I'm going to try to be a lot more intentional with my lineups, a lot more uh, focused on which games I look at. So as we go through, I think there's going to be a quite a few of these games that I'm just going to be passing on completely. Um, or at least uh, one side of games I'll be passing on completely. And I'll talk through a few of these games where I think I just want a few one-offs for certain reasons. I'm um, just going to think there's only like a few ceiling possibilities in these games. And then otherwise I'm just going to be really intentional about the games I get. And I'm going to get really uh, focused on those games, tight cores uh, in terms of the games, but really spread within those games. Yeah. I was looking at maybe only doing uh, two, uh, two uh, stacks this week, two primary stacks and then building off of those and only doing about 12 total lineups. And when you're only doing 12 total lineups, you need to be very focused and very intentional in the games and the stacks that you attack. If you have a sprinkle of every, you know, players from every team and every game, when you're only doing 12 lineups, you know, 12 high dollar limit or 12 high dollar lineups, like I think you're just, I think you're just spreading yourself too thin. Yeah. So like, for instance, I did 150 last week, but in my uh, 20 set that I put into most of my high dollars, I only did my Mahomes stacks. So I put 100% Mahomes in my high dollar stuff, but played, um, but played a spread of quarterbacks in my 150 set. And, again, and I'll probably do a nothing better than playing 100% well. of a guy that gets there. Yeah, I mean, that's uh, what ended up being my uh, saving grace. So I had like a break even week, which in GPPs is like a straight win, right? Um, you you want to know how you want to know you want uh, you want to know how uh, you can know that I did not play Patrick Mahomes 100% last week? 
uh, guessing you did not have a break even week. <laughs> no, he, did, he he didn't tear his ACL because I, I mush people. That's what I do. He would have he would have yes. died he would have died on the field. His heart would have gave out or some shit like that. Well, please never uh, play him the weeks I'm playing. Or actually, just ever because I need that man to keep going. I'm not a Chiefs fan, but I think he's good. Hey, to he's got that. He's got my best ball lineups looking sweet. I overdrafted. <laughs> I I overdrafted uh, quarterback so hard at best ball, and they're all paying off early. Although I think I saw Justin Herbert is dead. I think that was on the injury report. He's dead. Oh yeah, uh, ribs, dead ribs. Yeah. Okay. Uh, one thing you said that we have more information to go on than we did last week. I want to put this out there. I think we have more information that could actually fuck people up even more. Like could lead people down the wrong path because they're going to uh, overanalyze or take too much value from a one week sample than they should. Uh, perfect example, just off the top of my head. Like I'm really not convinced that Daryl Henderson is going to be a bell cow that everybody thinks he is just because he got so much of the workload in week one. I see people talking he's a must play in cash and he's the best GPP value out there. And like I'm just telling you, man, maybe that will be the case. Maybe he'll play 80 percent of the snaps again. But if I know the Rams, like I'm not convinced that that's going to be the case. I think that is a really good take and one that I was uh, actually thinking about this morning as I was looking through stuff. I am definitely not convinced that Henderson is going to get uh, the run or like the same run he got last week. And if the field is convinced he is with like a 20% plus ownership of Henderson, I'm happy to, to either not play any Rams running back and I mean, pay up, I guess for cup seems a little aggressive, but maybe just avoid that game um, or avoid like maybe get, I mean, play Rob, uh, Robinson, but, um, but yeah, just being avoiding the the point of the game that I'm not as sure about as the field is on. Right. Absolutely. 20, 20% Daryl Henderson. Get the fuck out of here. Get the fuck out of here. All right. Yeah. That'll uh, be a 0% for me. Hey, new guy, this site we're using right here. This is called run the Sims. Me and John swear by it. We like it. As you can see, it has an optimizer rate projected ownership, but what's really cool is you can go put your inputs for every game and then run simulations up to five or 10,000 times. And it will tell you how often that player shows up in the optimals. If you're playing fantasy football at any serious level and you're not using tools you're not going to make it, brother. Um, you got to use tools to assist you in your process. This is what we use. If you do like everything you're seeing here, go check it out. We're partners with them. Uh, use code DGEN75, D-E-G-E-N-75, and it will get you 10% off. Check it out. Let's get going, John. This first game. Hey, real more- quick, as long as you're uh, talking about Run the Sims, not to cut you off, but there is so much more than just what we show on here. If you bet games, if you bet props, there's prop simulators. There is so much uh, other functionality to Run the Sims. It is uh, it's awesome site. Tremendous um, for showdown also. Awesome for showdown. And just the input, uh, being able to play with inputs is so important. If you have a different take on games or you just want to see what if this game plays out this different way. Um, it's super valuable as a research tool. So, um, yeah, I just had to throw my two cents in on that one. All right. Let's talk about your Panthers first. Uh, we are going to go through here and I think that this game is actually sneaky, could be sneaky high scoring. I really wanted to run Christian McCaffrey and I really wanted to run it back with a Daniel Jones stack and just cause I want some access to this game, but I don't want Barkley. I think Barkley is, you know, as you can see right here, they're projecting him at over 20% yet. He's only showing up in the optimal about 11% of the time with the generic inputs. And I feel like that's just a very negative leverage play. So I want Daniel Jones, but who the hell do I stack him with? Yeah, that's a great question on that wide receiver core from uh, the Giants, especially with Wondell being hurt now. Um, so I, I guess you could see like if Galladay is going to get a roll or uh, they didn't seem to like Tooney or I guess Sterling Shepard. Yeah, um, I don't like Danny Dimes stacks personally. Uh, if I was playing this part of this game, and I don't think I'm going to. Um, I think it would probably be DJ Moore um as like a sneaky under like i don't think he's had 10 percent projected own i would be wagering that's going to be an under yeah we we do um, our own ownership and i and I, something tells me he is not going to be 10 percent owned in the ownership we put out yeah I, I don't think he'll be anywhere near that i would guess he'll be single digit definitely and i think if people are going to be uh like i probably would be dj with saquon uh if i was going to eat the chalk on saquon it would be paired with dj but i probably wouldn't play saquon at that ownership i probably won't be playing saquon at that ownership so I play any part of this game. I think it would be DJ, um, but I'm probably going to avoid this game. Although CMC yeah. at 14% feels like a sexy uh, little pick there. Yeah, I like Christian McCaffrey a lot. Um, but those would be one offs. I don't see a run back uh, really being viable in this yeah. game. But we just said we don't really want to play lots of one offs this week. So now you're already you're already pissing on my dreams. Uh, that would be, the, yeah, that's what I was saying. So as we go through these games, you'll see like there's just going to be a few spots where I want to play one offs, and otherwise I'll, I'll be avoiding. So as I go through the slate. 
and uh, we'll talk as I go through here. I think there'll be games where I just say I'm not going to play anyone or one-offs. And then as I get to the end of the games, I'll look and if I have a ton of one-off games, I'll just need to start deciding which of these one-offs I'm willing to play and which I'm just going to have to pass on. Because I think I got two spread out last week and I'm looking to get even tighter, even in my 150 set. Even though I went very tight in my high dollar stuff, I want to get tight even in my 150 set. Here's the problem I'm running into. I just hate the stacks this week. There's not many quarterbacks that are in stacks that I enjoy. And so because of that, I'm trying to get creative and find some stacks. That's why I even mentioned Daniel Jones. I don't like Daniel Jones, but damn, I love good cheap stacks because I love to run correlated secondary stacks with some high level with uh, high high price players like Justin Jefferson last week. 100%. I think that's a fair. And in terms of pace, I mean, this the Carolina Giants game is a game that Pat Foreman noted as an up pace game in his article. So, I mean, if, if you're looking for opportunity meets, you know, a high paced game, I think the Carolina Giants game makes a lot of sense. Do the Panthers have a defense that's good enough to slow down Saquon? Uh, our run defense is pretty awful, actually. So that that we got gutted. I mean, granted, we played the one of the better running teams in the league last year in Cleveland, but um yeah our run defense did not look good um, that was a struggle last season as well so i could see saquon having a game but uh, so Saqu also, I, saquon's I just, the nuts you heard it from john gold you heard it right there. Uh, 20 at 20 percent, i don't think i'll be getting there so if he's the nuts this will probably be a, a low dollar week for there's me. just there's some really good running back options this week I, as much as i don't like quarterbacks i like running backs this week um uh well i like like three of them uh, but I, I might just play those three and no one else. So uh, this game, I, I have a feeling this is going to be one of those games we just avoid. The Jets and Broncos, is there, or the Jets, excuse me, the Jets and the Browns, is there anybody that you can get to in this game? This game is going to be so slow. So my list of one-offs, I'll definitely have uh, Chubb, but that's one I'm easily willing to get away from if, um, if I have too many one-off running backs because I, I don't see bringing back a giant against this game. This game will just be slow and boring. Are you not concerned uh, that Hunt was on the field more than Chubb in week one? Uh, I, th I, I think that was a function of the game. I think they needed, when they got back, they needed to have a passing down back in there, um, in their comeback there at the second half. So, yeah, I'm not super concerned about that. I think Chubb showed elite talent, um, and if they're going to be in a boring slog game, I like Chubb, Chubb to have an opportunity to – to be the pounder you, and Amari Cooper just can't get there not enough upside in a slow game for a for a meddling wide receiver yeah and then wide receivers more so than running backs I want to I want to bring back in a wide receiver I think the variability in that position I want the opportunity for two guys just to go ham against each other so this is a noob mistake that I just want to help some people out I see the New York Jets defense here 2200 that's going to be delicious playing Jacoby Brissett that's going to be delicious but like eight percent you don't want to play defenses that are getting above five percent like it's just it's just a fail failing situation and in this game in particular if we're thinking it's going to be a slow game and the Browns are going to run the ball where the hell are you going to get your points from like where where where, where are the Jets going to find 10 12 15 points uh, from their defense against a team that's running the ball 60 percent of the time yeah, so I agree with the second part, not as much the first part. I'm okay with 8%. I don't like defenses that start getting up into the double digits, but that second point is exactly it. You don't The defense scoring that you're looking for in terms of GPP winning defense scoring isn't coming from holding a team to 10 points or 8 points or even a shutout or whatever. That, that's not the scoring you're looking for. You're looking for defensive touchdowns, sacks, things that are happening when a quarterback drops back a high percentage of the time. And so I think it is a common misconception that you want a defense in a slog game because I don't think in a GPP sense that you do. Well, I'm just going to go ahead and tell you the Jets at 2200 will be higher than 8%. We all know that uh, run the Sims, uh, their, their ownership projections are a little bit on the conservative side sometimes. So uh, let's get over here to um, uh, this third game, Miami Baltimore. Uh, I want this to be my game. I really, really do, but I'm not sure. What do you think? You sold me on Lamar last week. You still owe me some money for that. Uh, who <laughs> Let me sell you on Lamar again. So this game is actually uh, on my short list. I've got three games that I'm going to focus hard on. Uh, this is a game I'm going to stack both ways. I'll be playing both quarterbacks in this one. Um, and yeah, I think this is a game that has an opportunity to be a sneaky shootout. Um, I yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm in on this who, game. Who are you going to stack with each of them? Like, I want to hear like who are some guys that you'll be rotating in your stacks with both Tua and um, uh, Lamar. So two, I think I'm actually just going to be playing doubles with both Waddle and Hill, um, probably exclusively. Uh, hey, how did our boy uh, Gasicki? Did I guess based on his optimal rate, he didn't get much run last week? 
didn't do anything. Yeah, I think he was out there blocking. I don't think he was out there running routes. Um, can, let's see. Can you not do it? Um, can you not do a Chase Edmonds uh, stack with Tua? Is he? Is it, yeah, actually, you know what? I, I may consider that. And actually, running backs is one I'm going to be playing a little bit more um, in my stacks um, this week. In the idea, and I, I can't remember who I heard talking about it this week. And I wish I could give someone credit because I, I really like the conversation they were having. But um, basically, it was the idea of sort of like in best ball where we draft running backs with quarterbacks or even wide receivers together without the quarterback for the idea that if the offense does well, like the bigger pie gives everyone a better opportunity to eat a bigger slice of that pie. Um, And so same in GPPs where there's not as much correlation. I mean, in this offense, there is correlation a little bit. You can get dump offs to admins, but even on a non pass catching back or a back that doesn't get a lot of his points from pass catching there's an opportunity for just in a game where a team scores 35 points, especially in a slate like this, where there's not any, you know, outlier game, except for maybe possibly that last one um, in terms of high over unders. If you get a game that absolutely shoots out, um, you could have two guys scoring 40, even though they aren't correlated together. Did you just go with Um, a capitalism argument? We need a bigger pie so everybody can have a a, a little bit more of the slice. Is that, I'm not sure if that's a capitalism argument, but I'm I'm uh, pretty sure everybody who loves capitalism uses that one. We got to, the bigger the pie, the more everybody can have. That's what you just went with there. You went with the capitalism. But if you think about it, if you think of every game as a pie and if if only one game ends up as a big ass pie and all the other games are these medium pies, I'm cool having a running back. Capitalist. I mean, your name. Big ass your name's John Galt. Isn't that from? Isn't that from Atlas Shrugged? Is, Absolutely. Isn't that like a so like capitalistic like foundational book? Okay. No, so, we get it. My, uh, we get it. We get it. Panda. Okay. <laughs> so, um, this is why you don't get in arguments with people like me. I'm educated. Okay. Uh, Lamar's not running. I I heard. I think. It had to have been one of the ETR guys talking about Lamar not running and had a theory about, like, it's contract season and he ain't trying to get hurt and go run a bunch. And I really liked it. And it's just been like that inception thought that's been in the back of my head ever since then. What are your thoughts on the Lamar not getting many rushing yards week one? Uh, I think there's something to be said about week one or early season, him not wanting to rush. But I think if you tell me at the end of the season, if there's – I mean, he's obviously will still be bitching about his contract if they haven't got it by the end of the season because they have that cutoff point. But – He'll uh, he'll rush at the end of the season. He he wants to win games. I, I don't think uh, for a second he would uh, tank games at the end of the season when they matter by not using his legs. Now week two may be the same thing. He may not want to be a rush. If he's not, he may not want if he's to. Not, right? If he's I mean, not going to run, he's not a good play. Like he's not. He doesn't pass well enough. If he's not going to run, I, I I don't think you can justify paying seventy four hundred dollars for him. He's a he's a fifty eight hundred dollar quarterback when he doesn't run. Yeah, I think that's totally fair. Um, I think if you are playing him, you are hoping for a rushing upside, and I will be playing him with one pass catcher in my stacks with him. And it better just be—it be. better just be Andrews. I—I just—I was watching. I watched a lot of him last week because he was probably the quarterback that I played the most. And he just, man, he just doesn't target Bateman enough. The the Duvernay thing was a fluke. Like, who the hell does he going to throw to other than Andrews? Uh, Andrews will be my highest stack, but I will play Bateman again. Um, like we, you know, we talked about earlier, week one usage, while helpful for like getting some idea, it is just one game sample. And if so, I uh, if I could tell you playing Rashad, that's bait, man. I'm telling you. See what I did? <laughs> All right, sorry, I, I just thought of that right now. You probably think I came in with that one. All right, let's move on. This this is a game, another game that I really want to get access to, but I think it's going to be very chalky. Uh, so maybe I'll just fade this mother father. Um, this Detroit versus Washington game. Uh, you, you start with the takes. How's our boy DeAndre Swift looking? I see the little injury symbol. He said he was going to play. Okay. Yeah, man, he looked uh, so good week one, and he got vultured touchdowns. He had a 40-point game week one if he doesn't get vultured both he times. He could have had an absolute monster of a game. Yeah, um, yeah I like this game a lot, and I, I think it is going to get steamed up, so I'm keeping my eye. There's actually two games that are on my list that I'm keeping an eye on ownership. But I think I'm committed, um, given my strategy this week, of just playing my games, even if they get high ownership. But like we talked about on one of the earlier videos, is just playing it in a different way. Um, And so I I think this is another game. I'm probably going to stack both quarterbacks in this game. Mm. Um, Damn, how many stacks are you running, bro? I thought you said... I'm probably going to run four to five, and I think it'll come from these two games and then one off in the other game that we'll get to at the end. Well, 
I, I got bad news. I'm about to tell you the correct stack in a minute. You're going to be heartbroken. I can't wait to hear it. I'm going to guess it's Trevor Lawrence. Oh, I, like, you fucking know me too well, brother. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to give me all the... Okay, we're getting ahead of ourselves. This game right here. Who do you think... You say you want to attack this game, but in a different way. I don't literally see anybody that's going to be the leverage play. Last week we had, what was it? Amon Ra on one side and Miles Sanders on the other, right? They were the leverage plays in a game with a high projected total that got there. And we played that pretty well, but I don't see those guys in this game. In the early uh, lineups I've built this week, I have Logan Thomas tight end uh, paired with Amon Ra. I think Amon Ra probably gets a did little he, more. Ownership. Did Logan Thomas run that many routes though? I thought they were trying to like. Uh, he bring was him coming back, back off well. injury. Yeah, yeah, exactly. He's coming off injury. Um, I think he'll get used more as the season goes on, and I'd rather be early. I think he showed that he has like some elite talent there. So I'd rather be early on him getting a bigger roster share. And this week, without the stud tight ends on the um, board, I think it's an opportunity to get a little bit different at a position with pretty high variability. Man, this game, I just, like, if I want, like, I I told you, I want to play cheap quarterbacks, and I really am open to the idea of a Carson Wentz stack. I know that's gross to a lot of people, but I'm just not sure who the hell I want to stack him with. I don't want to stack him with Scary Terry. He's just not getting enough targets. I feel like Curtis Samuel, like, played above his pay grade last week. Johan Dotson, I don't want to go chasing, uh, you know, last week's performance. So, like, who the hell do I stack him with? I'm not going no, to play, play a Wentz play Thomas those stack. Guys. Yeah, I'm not going to play a Wentz Thomas stack. Get the fuck out of here. So I don't think you can pair. I, I think you need to double stack once if you're playing once. I think, I, I um, honestly, I, I think I'm going to just fade this game. If anything, I would play like a golf. Nah, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. I'm just, so I, 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 I like I like a golf Swift Amon Ra stack. It gets yeah. a little expensive, but golf is cheap enough that he offsets it. Yeah. Um, yeah, I actually like that. Good. So when Jamal lot, Williams has with... three touchdowns, you're going to be filing Chapter 11. Oh, I mean, you know, don't risk what you can't afford to lose. But yeah, gotcha. <laughs> I, I may not be going to the house that or to the pay window that week. Gotcha. All right. So this game, I mean, man, I just if I could give one final thought on it, I just hate how the usage is so spread out. I feel like there's so many guys that could have good games here that that would probably be appealing to some people. But I'm a guy that really likes uh, concentrated usage. And when I know that, hey, I can just rotate these few players and I'm guaranteed if this game goes off to get that usage. I could see this game going off and people getting there that you're never thinking. You know, Jamal Williams, J.D. McKissick, um, Terry McLaurin. DJ Chark. Yeah, DJ Chark. There are guys that could go off in this game and this game could shoot out and you could still not get there. And I fucking hate that. I don't mind stacking Jared Goff, Amon Ra, and Chark. There you go. That's, uh, I, yeah, I get, yeah. I yeah. think if you're going to play or even golf, Hawkinson, right? I mean, you could, yeah, you could do if golf, if Amon Ra, gonna, Hawkinson. I'm waiting to see your ownership. I trust it way more. But if Hawkinson's really going to be 9%, get the fuck out of here. Get the fuck out of here. Uh, not playing Hawkinson. This week is interesting because there's not a ton of tight ends out there, but I don't expect Oh, to. sir, there is tight ends out there. And let me just go ahead and use that as a so segue to our next game. Evan Ingram's out there. Okay, I said okay. what I said. All right, so... <laughs> Here it is, man. I, let me tell you why I like this game. And I, I, I know I can go ahead and sell this all I want because no one's playing Trevor Lawrence stacks like the big guy. Trevor Lawrence actually played pretty good last week. He got off to a slow start, but he ended up resurrecting and having a pretty solid game. And that was with ETN dropping a touchdown, Zay Jones dropping a touchdown. Like he had about as low of a performance as he could have had in that game. Furthermore, with Trevor Lawrence, uh, he's 5300 and that's a really good price. Furthermore, I think this game could shoot out. And further, further, furthermore, I really know who the fuck he's going to throw the ball to. It's going to be Zay Jones, Christian Kirk, Marvin Jones, and Evan Ingram, and they're all cheap, and I can just mix and match those guys with a lot of different stacks with him. And I love Jonathan Taylor as the obvious run back. So, like, wh wh tell, tell, me, tell me, convince me right now not to do 100% Trevor Lawrence stacks this week. Uh, well, I don't do 100% of anyone, so I would encourage you. Just you just said you did 100% Mahomes in your high limit last week, you lying mother father. I still had 80% of my lineups in a 150 set to diversify. You can still bank a GPP and come I know, out ahead. I know how much you play. 150 and what was it, the $5? Was that like the $9. Okay. Chump change to John Gold JD. <laughs> So, uh, but anyways, back on the thing here. So I, I wouldn't play 150, but I guess if you're playing 12 lineups, I guess, yeah, one, we're 100% away. But uh, I do actually, the, the more you were kind of spelling out your uh, argument there for Lawrence, I don't hate it. He does have the price tag. I guess he does have the upside in this game. Um, and I'd like your obvious bring back. My only concern with Taylor is he needs like 30 points probably at mm -hmm. least at that night at almost 10K or 9,900. Um, so 
I mean, yeah, obviously Taylor's a, a dude that can do 30 points. Yeah, no problem against this Jags Shit, defense, is, but... is Pittman going to be out? Uh, I mean, I if, if he so. didn't practice Friday, a good rule in NFL, if they don't practice Friday, uh, uh, like they're almost always out when they don't practice Friday. And it says right here, Pittman Jr. did not practice Friday heading into week two. So if he's oh, wow. out, does that not start making people like Paris Campbell um, very, very viable? I mean, they got to throw the ball to somebody, right? Yeah, and Alec Pierce is out too, right? He, he was yeah. uh, in the concussion protocol. Yep. Yeah, so he should. Oh, he has been ruled out already. Yeah, he's already. So, yeah, out. I guess they're so, down to Paris Campbell and then Austin Doolin, whoever the fuck that is. Yeah, that's an interesting wide receiver core. I so think maybe JT, I run it back. Maybe I, I run it back with Paris Campbell. Some. I could run it back. So I could run a cheap Jag stack, run it back with Paris Campbell, and then have all the money left over to go stack every other position. I don't know. You could sell me on a one percent Naeem Hines over that if they need wide receivers. Oh, that's a good call. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, they might run some uh, some two back personnel and let him just get some dumps. I mean yeah. that <clears throat> that's a sneaky way to get uh, to get this game. Right. Um, so we we you tell we me have... at half the price he's got one twelfth the opportunity of hitting a ceiling over Taylor. Yeah. How does that go? Get the fuck out get of here! The fuck out <laughs> of here. Not bad. It's not bad. You need to. I can tell you're not a a New York boy. You, you, you got to get out of here. All right. So uh, I, I really like your point about Jonathan Taylor. That does make me a little skeptical. But I will say this. If the game shoots out, he will likely get 30 points. And I can afford him if I'm running a Jag stack against him. That would be the two points I would make to that. Yeah, I'm looking at this Paris Campbell. I imagine he'll get steamed up if once a Pittman's officially ruled out. But, man, if he's going to come in low-owned at $3,700, he has an opportunity to be this week's Dobson mm-hmm. where he just pays off that low salary and yeah. he's just there. Let's see. Where's the wide receiver stuff here? Uh, this tight ends, tight ends, wide receivers. What team am I looking for? The Colts. Uh, let's see. I just want to see how much he ran last week. Did I just overlook him? There we go. Yeah, Indianapolis. Paris Campbell. Uh, well, yeah, he was on he the field. He played 71% of, 77% yeah. of snaps. He uh, ran around. He only got eight percent targets, which isn't great. But you know that's because Pittman was being a usage monster. So yeah, and if Pittman's right. not going to be there, someone's got to get that number. It's got to be absorbed uh, somewhere. Target share. Yeah, yeah. All right, I Paris, actually like Paris Campbell. At Paris Campbell's on the radar. Be, we will be watching news tomorrow at ten thirty, and if that breaks, the lineups are going to be changing quickly. All right. Yeah, he just lets you do a, 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 st- a cheapy like that lets you do so much. So now if you're skinny stacking this game, you can do cheapy stud. I guess there's really not a stud on the other side, quote unquote, but you could do Kirk. You could skinny Kirk and Campbell. Yeah. And that's actually cheap. That still lets you do a lot. Oh, I like that. I actually like Kirk and Say too. Look at that. Everybody just saw. I just got him on the Jags. I got him on the Jags game, everybody. You just I'm not sure if you've got time. me on Sir. Uh, Lawrence Stacks, but I'm at least on skinnies well, here. Hey. If you're not on Lawrence Stacks, you don't like money. All right, we got to pick up the pace, brother. Here we go. Let's go. Uh, let's go. Tampa Bay. They are. Uh, it looks like everybody's dead. Everybody is dead. <laughs> Literally, everyone is injured, and that's very scary uh, for week two of a 17 or whatever 17 game season, uh, 18 week. But my best ball shares are loving it because I generally faded the Bucks uh, basically for this reason. How do you when feel you that? A bunch of how do you feel that you're the, the guy that you slander on a daily basis and call him Fat Lenny? How do you feel that he's the highest optimized player this week? I feel decent because I'm not positive he's going to play with a hamstring injury. So yeah, and uh, it just strikes me as one of those guys that like even if he does play, like first quarter he's out, he's going to tweak it. Yeah, and my theory, my whole theory was that he's not making it to the playoffs of best ball. That was my whole fade Lenny theory. Is Fat Lenny isn't making it to playoffs? So I will. I could, my slander, I stand by what I said. Man, I really if we find out that Russell Gage and Julio Jones are out, tell me why I shouldn't run a Tom Brady, uh, Mike Evans stack. Uh, I'm not sure Evans is going to play either, dude. Man, I'm, I'm not sure who's going to catch balls here. Yeah, this is crazy. <laughs> this is one uh, of those ones. This is another wide receiver core where you could end up getting like a Scotty Miller, right? If he's going to be their number one, and Scotty's shown he can flash, and he's had success with Brady in the past. Um, like I wouldn't mind playing a Scotty Miller if he's going to be their like de facto if, number if, one. If somehow Lenny is out, right? For whatever reason, he's they scratch him tomorrow. Rashad White over under sixty percent ownership. Oh. He sh- he'd be under. He'll definitely be under. He'll, he'll be like 35, though. He'll be super high ownership. Would you? Uh, would, probably would you, rightfully so, though, right? Yeah. 4,500. I wouldn't play him at 3,500 or 35%. No, I can't. Gotcha. Um, I, although I do remember the Madison week last season. I played him at 65%. So didn't cheap. regret it at yeah. all. Didn't regret I was it just at all. Say, 
I doubled the uh, the field, and I think he was projected at 30 pass. I, think I, I, seven. I hate New Orleans. I don't like their team total. I don't, uh, you know, I try to talk myself into a Jameis Winston stack, but I'm not even sure is he going to throw it to Olave, Michael Thomas, Jarvis Landry. People are going to see that Thomas got the points last week, but it was such a fluke. He didn't have shit going on until the fourth quarter. Uh, you want to go chase that again, you go right ahead, brother. Well, yeah, if you look at wide receiver usage in that game, it was all over the place, and there wasn't even a particularly high volume anywhere. And so I don't know what to make of that team. Um, I, I want to like this game because it's Atlanta and like they are bad at defense. But, yeah, I don't know what to expect um, in terms of target share in that game. I guess maybe Landry or maybe Alave as the season goes on. Um, but, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I, that's a game I just uh, – yeah. And I, I did want not, to like, but I don't. And I was not impressed with Alvin Kamara. I was not impressed. I'll, and he might not even play. He did not practice Friday, so there's a decent chance he's out tomorrow too. Uh, yeah, and that just shows you how important news is. Like yeah. In NFL, more than any other sport, even more than like PGA, you shouldn't be making lineups until Sunday morning or Saturday night at the absolute latest. But there are inactives up until an hour, and I think it's an hour and a half or an hour and 15 yeah. before. They have, they have to put it out 90 so, minutes before. It used to be 90 yeah, minutes. 90 minutes, there you go. And so you need to be you you need to be paying attention to that. Even if you've built your lineup Saturday night, you gotta check because there are like value opportunities that open up. There are guys that get scratched that you don't. There are guys that are added to rosters that make you question. So it, like for instance, in like a ambiguous backfield role, and all of a sudden they activate a running back from the practice squad. That tells you even more so that they're not confident in their lead backs because they've just brought an insurance up. So like Lenny with a hamstring, say Lenny's playing. Rashad White, but all of a sudden they activate a third back from the practice squad. Well, that tells you they're pretty fucking worried about Lenny not playing the game or not playing much of the game because right. now they've effectively said Lenny's down and we've got our two backs, you know, Rashad and whoever they've activated. Make sure make sure not to share that with everybody. Just send me a message in the Discord. Don't share it with everybody else. <laughs> but if you're wondering what the those are the kind of things. Yeah, we, we post all of our stuff, all of our information, all of our ownership over here on the Discord. It's in the description of this video. Come check it out. Uh, you can contact me and John with questions anytime you want. Um, it's in the description. It's connected to the Patreon. All right, this game right here is so gross. Uh, the Patriots and the Steelers, I just want to run two names by you. I will refuse to talk about anybody else. Deontay Johnson, Jacoby Myers. The optimizer says that they are both highly leveraged plays. Um, can you get there on either one of them? I don't think I'm any part of this game, to be honest. Um, this is on, on Thorman's Pace article I referenced earlier, like one of the slowest games. Uh, two offenses I'm not particularly confident in being any sort of competent. Um, yeah, just give me a pass on this one. All right. I, 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 Jacoby Myers, that's the one guy I would consider uh, just because I like 4,400. I'll let you know. You want to know a little secret? 4,400 makes your lineups a lot easier to make. There you go. There's a fact. Wasn't something wrong with Mac Jones, right? I don't see an injury designation on here, but didn't he get uh, banged up? Or I feel like I in my earlier research I had something in my mind of Mac was not uh... – he doesn't have the little symbol by him, and uh, Run the Sims is pretty good at keeping those injury things updated. So I don't. Yeah, know no, they're awesome. So yeah, All right, let's so. let's use that time that we just did not spend on that game talking about this one. I feel like this is probably going to be what this will be one of the three chalkiest games, right? Uh, for sure. And uh, in Atlanta and the Rams, what are you feeling? And here? this is one I am looking forward to fading actually, which is probably means it's going to go off. Um, but yeah, this is one of the games that I've just decided I don't think the ownership is going to make this one worth it to me. Man, I thought I thought you were the one that got my ass on on a on a skinny Stafford cup. Uh, uh, didn't you get me? I know that? I was on that early in the week. I think that was that was one of the games I liked earlier. The idea of just playing Stafford cup. Um, but the more I look at it, there's just other spots on this slate that I like more. And I think if people are going to make this a popular game, I am happy to avoid this one. Plus, um, so if you do a Stafford, ahead. if you do a Stafford and cup stack. I mean, like, that's a lot of salary you just used up right there for a non-mobile quarterback and a wide receiver that basically has to get 30 points. That's exactly and even even if he gets 30 points, that's not even a slate breaker. He could get 30 points and it'd just be, like, part of a decent lineup. Yeah, he starts to matter like when he gets 30 points in terms of if you fade him and he scores 30, he'll, yeah. you'll start to see him in lineups ahead of you. But if he scores 40, he'll be in all the lineups ahead of you. But if he scores 20 or 25, he probably won't be in any of the lineups ahead of you, you know, obviously depending on what your lineups are. Well, but he's not see, going to be – him is not propelling himself. Seeing Trevor time. Lawrence is going to get uh, 37 tomorrow, I'm not too worried about it. Trevor um, Lawrence will break, break the slate if he scores there you, I, Hey, I called so. it here first. I'm just going to keep – hey, I am going – one of two things is going to happen. I'm going to win all the money one week. I'm going to win like two GPPs with Trevor Lawrence, or I'm going to uh, 
lose my house. One of those two is going to happen. I'm not sure which one's going to come first, but one of them is going to happen. Can we, can we Venmo request Trevor Lawrence? Yeah, exactly. Hey, Trevor, you, I saw that signing bonus, man. Times are tough. So uh, anybody <laughs> from the, the Falcons, I just hate them, man. I don't like London. I You know, Pitts I want to like, but people are going to play him and, like, God, Mariota sucks. And that's what sucks about playing good tight ends and good wide receivers. Maybe Drake London and Kyle Pitts are awesome, but Mariota sucks, and he cannot feed usage monsters. Yeah, so the Mariota run actually made Cordero quite efficient last week. And so I'm a little interested in Cordero, but also, like, why am I going to chase efficiency at 6K? Um, so I probably was off that game. Like you said, Pitts is one that I want to like. I think he has more talent than anyone uh, definitely on that roster. But probably almost anyone in the tight end position, barring like a handful of guys. But um, I just want to like him. But like you said, if the field's going to like him in a variable game with a bad quarterback, uh, I'm probably happy to find another spot. All right, let's uh, let's keep moving here. Seattle and uh, Seattle and San Francisco. Uh, man, I really want Trey Lance to be my secondary uh, another stack that I run because I'm telling you, I don't like any stacks this week. So like. A lot of people have him as a bounce back game. That is for sure. This is uh, a 5,700 is very affordable, brother. Very affordable. And you can stack him with Uh, Ayuk, who I'm a, you know, I'm an Ayuk slut. Um, So I decided that Lance is a guy I'm going to make show to me before I'm spending another dollar on Trey Lance. I decided that last season when I wasted money on him, I didn't spend one single dollar on him in best ball. Uh, I take that back. I think I have 1% because I accidentally auto drafted his ass once. Um, but I literally committed to not spending a dollar on Trey Lance until he shows it to are me. You su- I'm not sure he is an NFL caliber quarterback. I agree. Are you are you are you uh, surprised to see Jeff Wilson Jr. at 5100 only coming in? Uh, you know, at pretty modest ownership here, or is he just I not a guy actually that can was handle purposely the not going to mention him on this show because I didn't want uh, to bring attention to that fact. Right. Well, then hey, shut up. Ownership. Just to just say but this. Never heard of him. Never heard of him. Let's move on. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Check out the check out our private show because I have some thoughts on Jeff Wilson. There you go. That'll be over on the Discord. We're gonna record it after this. You guys get our rough draft, you mother fathers. If you don't like it, come check out the Discord. All right, let's. Uh, man, yeah, that game. Uh, one last thought on that game. A total of forty point five is ridiculous. Um, that is a low scoring game. I feel like that's one I'm just gonna have to stay away from. I feel like anybody that does well in that game, Ayuk needs to go off in a shootout kind of game or hit a couple big plays. I don't think that's gonna be this kind of game. Debo at 7,800 needs to be uber efficient, and Trey Lance has to show it to me. And there's no way I'm playing any Seahawks. Um, I was interested in Rashad Penny, but isn't our boy uh, Kenneth Walker back this week? Uh, I he does not yes. have a designation, yeah, but he's, he's coming up that hurry. I but can't he, imagine they just put him into usage. Yeah, that surgery is like pretty legit. Rashad Penny got a lot of run last week. I don't think he'll get that much. Let's let's move on to Houston, Denver. Um, first of all, why does the optimizer fucking just love Albert O? Like it's basically saying play Albert O in every one of your lineups. He's the nuts. And I got to tell you, I don't like. You think I hate quarterbacks this week? I fucking hate tight ends this week. So tell me why I shouldn't just play Albert O in every single one of my lineups. Go. I actually like Alberto quite a bit, um, and I'm surprised that the optimizer was giving him you so much because actually the projections I've seen for him weren't necessarily that great. Um, but the reason I like him, I thought his usage was pretty encouraging, and he was someone I was low on um, coming into this season, but his usage was encouraging in that Seahawks game and in a kind of a crap week for tight end in terms of mainstay tight ends. Um, I think he's someone that has an interesting role in a game that can actually be pretty sneaky interesting. Uh, yeah. Okay. What about Javante? You know, Javante seemed like he had a really good week one. I think that has a lot of people excited, but if you really look a little bit deeper, uh, on Javante, he did most of it pass catching, just catching a bunch of dump offs, right? Like it wasn't, uh, the way you would expect him to get there. Um, you know, he played 38 versus 27 to Melvin Gordon in total snaps, but, uh, uh, what was it? Uh, the actual rushing Melvin Gordon got 60% of them. Javante only got 35%. Is that not a little alarming for a $6,500 uh, running back that you're essentially playing the backup? Yeah. I mean, and Melvin got first crack at goal line work too. So that, that's the other uh, discouraging part of that. But I think at least why I drafted Javante so heavily in best ball is I think we have to look for that role to evolve. You know, one is a veteran back who's healthy early season and one is a young you know, second year back who in theory should just be getting stronger as the season goes on. Do you think they're trying to save some tread on his tires for later in the year? I think that's true for a lot of players. And Austin Eckler actually talked about it on his podcast. Um, Like veteran players get different run early in the season, right? I mean, their teams are smarter about trying to save you dudes for later in the season. And so like, I, 
for season long fantasy, I know that's not the point of this show, but I wouldn't be discouraged by some of the veteran elite players that aren't getting work. Like Eckler, his his share was kind of crap early in the season or so okay. far it's been anyways. Because I keep but, hey, put, I kept putting Javante Williams up on the trading block on my best ball and no one's accepting Ooh. him. That's Ooh, a, that's, season long, don't do that. Don't no, no, that. I said I said best ball. It was a joke, brother. Thanks for coming with me. Oh, oh, oh. There's no <laughs> trades at best ball, you mother father. I'm a big dumb animal. I okay. assume you meant season long. <laughs> big dumb animal. That's a Tommy Boy reference. Okay. Um <laughs> Anybody else from this game? There's no way I'm playing $7,200 Russell Wilson. I don't like his wide receiver options. I think this is a slow, boring game, um, and I would really like to play Denver's running backs here, but I don't love how much they're going to split it. So this is another one of those games. I don't know if I'll play anybody outside of Alberto. Uh, so I am somewhat tempted by this game in skinnies. I think there is a chance Denver tries to let Russ cook a little more. Um, so if I played skinnies, it would probably be like a Sutton with, well, oh, DK seems kind of gross, but Sutton with DK or even Sutton with Penny. Um, so $6,000 is such a, like a threshold in my mind. When I see wide receivers over 6,000, I start thinking to myself, like that needs to be the guy for a team. You know what yeah. I mean? Like that's such a weird number. 5,900. I'm like, okay, he's, he's a, he can be a second tier guy, but when it's 6,000, they better be the guy. And I'm not convinced Cortland Sutton is the guy. Um, okay, so also I was still thinking of last week's game when I said bring it back with Penny. So I think in this case it would be bringing it back, obviously, with Cooks or Nico Collins. Yep. Um, but uh, I need to get Seahawks Broncos off my mind. But, yeah, no, actually, I think this game actually has a chance to go. Um, so, yeah, yeah, I'm actually somewhat Look interested at that total. in Texans. 45 is actually one of the relatively higher totals. Matter of fact, it's the fourth highest total on the slate, right? Yeah. It's the fourth highest total on the slate. Interesting. Interesting. I didn't even notice that. Okay. Yeah, probably not interested in, in the running backs for the Broncos. Um, I guess Javante, if he gets there, it could, he could get it there in a game that they're from behind and chasing. So I guess you could play that script. Like Javante, a, they're skins. not going to be behind and chasing. I refuse to accept that. They're not. They're going to kick ass this game. I, okay, I mean, that's let's move on. Let's move on to game. a vomit game. I, with, with Dak being out, um, I feel like it really kills all of Dallas's upside. I can't get there with any of their guys now. Um, I don't. I just don't like any of them, and it really hurts the Bengals because I'm. You know, is T Higgins going to be out? Well, he was a full participant, so he's back. So now you've got you've got the Bengals who seem to be healthy. I think that they're just going to spread the wealth. They're going to get up two touchdowns, and they're just going to lean on the Cowboys. And they don't. None of their guys have huge upside. Tell me I'm wrong. Yeah, they don't have to have a ceiling uh, in this game because this game, in theory, should be easily winnable, although I would have said the same thing against Pittsburgh last week. But this game without Dak should be easily winnable. I don't see the Cowboys putting up enough points to make this the Bengals side put up points on the other side. So um, if I played anyone, it would be skinnies in this game, but who do I like on the Cowboys side is really the question, and I'm not positive there's anyone. Yeah. Um, so to your point about getting up and then just leaning on the Cowboys – that makes me like mix in a little bit because I mean his usage last week was a true bell cow roll. Yep. Um, and he, ma- so he it- makes a lot of sense. He does. Like if they're going to be up and they're not going to pull him and they're going to let him just run the ball, you got to start thinking he could get a hundred yards rushing a touchdown. And then if you get a hundred yards rushing with a touchdown, that's already 19 points in the bag minimum. Then you just throw in a couple catches for 25 yards. You've had a great week. Exactly. I think Mixon probably gets there uh, at a pretty high percentage. Yep. All right, let's talk about the last game. I think it will certainly be the chalkiest game on uh, the uh, slate. We have uh, the Raiders versus uh, the Cardinals. Um, Yeah, so this is the one that I am still trying to figure out how I want to stack, but I'm going to stack. Um, I think the ownership's probably going to get a little um, out of hand, and that's what I'm worried about because of that. It's the highest. It's not a game over 50. It's the highest over under. Um, but I want to stack car. I last week I got off stacking car and it was, you know, for the best it worked out, but I think I want to go to car this week. Um, the quarterback that I'm not sure where I'm, if I'm going to get to is going to be Kyler. Yeah. He just doesn't uh, want to give Kyler another chance, but it's like him say. and Marquise Brown are the two, like, you know, like they're like Bentleys. Right. And like every, you get your whole life, you, you just be, you just waiting to drive them and you finally get to drive them. You're like, Oh, these things fucking suck. And like, that's how I feel every time I play Hollywood and Kyler, like you see those 40 point weeks they have occasionally, but on a weekend week out basis, I'm telling you, they bust more than any of the elite players out there. Yeah. I think that's totally fair. But if Kyler's ownership is going to be held in check, I'm, I'm not positive after we talked through the Lamar thing that he's any different of a play than Lamar. Um, 
And so if the ownership is not going to be there or is going to be similar and I can get access to the higher ceiling game that I think has a better chance to shoot out, um, I think I might switch my Lamar shares to Kyler shares and just, you know, we lose most weeks anyways. So yeah, I I would, I would prefer Kyler over Lamar. Um, and the reason why is I just kind of like uh, some Kyler stacks more, right? And I like I like the runbacks uh, way more uh, over in this game. So like you could run Kyler with, uh, I mean, obviously Marquise Brown. So they can just bolt. Maybe instead of them uh, fucking over your lineups, if they both fuck it over, it cancels out and they actually make a good lineup. Maybe that's how it works in the fantasy football universe. Uh, <laughs> I mean, got, Kyler has elite ceiling still. So there's no way this Greg Dorch guy is going to be eight percent, right? Like he's going to be mega chalk at thirty five hundred. Once it's confirmed Rondell's out, he'll be uber chalk. He's yeah. already popping in at the few out- optimizers I've run so far this thing. Yeah, um, he's basically going to play the Rondell more. Role. A- AJ so. Green, too dusty? Too dusty. I played him last week and regretted it as soon as I locked. Yeah, I gotcha. Zach Ertz? Um, I want to go back and let's see what his usage, his snap count was. Because he was someone I was actually hoping missed so that we could see my boy Trey McBride go. Um, but that didn't obviously, as we saw, it didn't end up happening. Um, so let's see what was Ertz's use. Arizona. Oh, you'd be at the top of the chart, wouldn't you? Wow. I mean, he was out there 60% of the snaps. There was no other tight end that got a target. My boy McBride didn't even play. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess Ertz is viable. In, in I mean, it, like Kyler in a stack, I, w- I would only play him with Kyler, but I think he is. And then who's your run back? I'm actually, it looks like Renfro's getting some love this week, who I actually really liked is, uh, you know, people overreacting to week one. Darren Waller is another guy that you could play that is overreacting to week one. And Devontae Adams is a guy you could fade as everybody overreacts to week one. So I think all three of those are plays. I think I would probably, unless I'm using Carr, I would only use one of those because it's still to be seen whether Adams really is going to just monopolize targets there. I can't imagine he monopolizes 40 plus percent every week, but I could see him maintaining a 35 percent all through the season. Do we know Um, off the top of your head, do you know the pass rate of the Raiders and the pace of the Raiders? Like are they like through week one, were they were they passing more and were they playing at a faster rate? Or is this game just have a high total because Arizona always has high totals? So, uh, again, shout out to ETR. I don't want to use their stuff without crediting. But, yeah, Pat Thorman's article, that is the fastest game. And Vegas had one of the highest pass rate over expectation increases over last season. So then that that kind of – Yeah, and Josh Jacobs apparently is just dust now. So uh, if that's the case, then Derek Carr and just mix and mash. And Derek Carr is the kind of guy that can uh, get two guys there, right? He can get two pass catchers there, especially Renfro and Waller, right? Yeah, I completely like those. So that is a, like, fading the last week 100%. If you stack Carr, Renfro, Waller, you're saying you don't believe that Adams is taking an elite timeshare. Or you say, you know, those guys got in the locker room and were squeaky, and they're like, hey, you know, we, we're here too, homie. Yeah. Um, and he comes out and targets them both early. Like, Waller is a guy that is known for that, for, for being a squeaky wheel and then coming out and getting targeted. So, I mean, I haven't seen him give any snip comments out in the media or anything. But there are there have been games where he's snippy and then he comes out and gets you know forty percent of the early targets. Call, like they just have plays well. call it the whiny bitch syndrome. All right, <laughs> exactly. any overall thoughts? We're done with all the games. Any overall thoughts before we get out of here? I'm just trying to be super intentional with my uh, pool and lineups this week. Um, last week I think I got two spread, and this week I'm going to really try to focus on games um, that have an opportunity that I think other games just don't have an opportunity this week. So. Gotcha. And then my, my, my takeaway is Trevor Lawrence is God and or he's the worst player ever. We're going to find out tomorrow when he makes me all the money or loses it because I might stack him in every lineup, you mother father. For all of you that don't know, I'm the Degenerate 75. I appreciate you stopping by. New guy, come check us out. Come over to our Discord. We got like 10 new people yesterday. I don't know what's going on. People love the Discord. We do, we're do. we about to go make a video for them right now. If you want to know how to do it, it's in the description. It's through the uh, Patreon. Go check out Run the Sims. The code is DGEN75, all lowercase, 10% off. You can't beat it, man. I hope to see you guys, uh, what is that going to be, Monday for Monday Night Football, our showdown breakdown, and every week. I hope you kick ass tomorrow, and I hope you enjoy my outro. 